Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, personal finance, and most recently, Bitcoin mining related. Now today's video is going to be no different. We've got two special guests for you. Our resident Bitcoin analyst, Anthony Power, along with the CEO of BitDigital, Sam Tabar, to answer some questions specifically about their HPC AI business. Now we've heard comments from other CEOs in the industry that this may be a flash in the pan event. However, in this David vs. Goliath story, we wanted to shed some light on the benefits of HPC and this meaningful revenue stream that Bit Digital has really put together. Now, before we get into it, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's 100% free to do, and it really helps myself and Anthony out. If you're not part of the community, McNally Money, feel free to join. We also launched our Patreon. We'd love to see you in there. And let me know in the comment section below which side of this debate you're on, whether or not you see benefit in alternate revenue streams versus a peer play self-mining Bitcoin approach, and your outlook for all of the miners moving into this year's having event. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's discussion. Okay, guys, so that's right. Today's video, a two for one, you get Anthony Power, who is our resident Bitcoin analyst, plus Sam Tabar, who's the CEO of Bit Digital. As mentioned in the intro, we've had Sam on the program previously, but in today's discussion, we really wanted to talk about Bit Digital's HPC AI strategy and what differentiates this business unit compared to some of the other miners. So Sam, Anthony, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Having me. Perfect. We'll get right into it. So Sam, I know uh, we've covered Bit Digital a number of times on the channel, but can you give us a quick update kind of on your operations and in your opinion, what differentiates you guys in terms of infrastructure uh, when we're starting to look at these alternate revenue streams? Yeah, so with respect to operations, I think in the sector, we're probably one of the most diversified in terms of operations. We have operators in the United States, in Canada and Iceland. And uh, we have uh, an HPC business. Now, we actually have a business. We didn't announce inspiration. It's a business that gives us about 50 million annualized revenue, and that is going to be upsized in the near term future. And that business is uncorrelated to Bitcoin mining. So there's no having event in AI. And it's a very simple business to value. It's 50 million on the contract over three years that's going to be upsized. And the margins are very, very fat. We'll be giving more transparency on the margins during our financials after they're uh, published after Q1. In fact, the revenue just started happening. We announced it a few days ago. So, you know, we are really proud that we've been able to execute on this actual business. And unlike other Bitcoin miners in the sector, we didn't just try to buy a whole bunch of HPCs and hope that we can get a client. You can't run a business on hope. That's not what we did. We secured the business first, we secured the clients first, and then we built a business around those needs. That's very different from just trying to buy a bunch of HPCs and just hope that maybe we can get a contract. That's not what we did. Totally. Yeah, and there's a couple points you brought up there, Sam. Bitcoin price is definitely one that all of us have been watching and a lot of the peer play self miners, you're right, they're directly dependent on the underlying commodity price, whereas this gives you some non-correlated uh, revenue opportunity. Um, Anthony, I know you cover a lot of these companies, Bitcoin miners, and we've really seen AI HPC kind of become the tagline in addition to option uh, option equipment orders. It seems like that's the flavor of the week this year. But I wanted to get your context, uh, context here as well, because I know we've had a number of companies enter this space to differing capacities. So what are you really seeing at kind of the, the macro level? Well, you know, we, we've had two, two former, you know, mining companies in Canada, Hot Corp and Hive Digital, both uh, mined Ethereum using the GPUs. And when that stopped in September 2022, their revenues literally, you know, stopped or, or came off the end of a cliff, really. I mean, in terms of Hive Digital, I think for, you know, August or September, it was something like about 6 million in, in Ethereum mining. And the following month, when they changed uh, the GPUs to mine alternative coins and got paid in Bitcoin, those revenues dropped to about 200,000. So um, Hutt would have had a similar experience as well. They were also trying to do some mining um, of, of alternative coins and getting paid in Bitcoin. But when you've got that significant amount of GPUs, you've got to look for an alternative way to, to draw revenue from them. And then both of them sort of started looking at the, at the high performance computing space. I mean, Hutt actually went out and bought 
a um, a HPC business, um, and so you know they you know obviously they've been growing that there. Um, Hive have been testing what they do, and they've they've bought more um, more servers and more up to date GPUs as well. To you know, not all the GPUs they had for Ethereum mining were able to be converted, but they were able to convert some of those. And they've been doing some testing in the background, but the revenue is really um, in the last report. I think there's like literally a million uh, run rate for 2023, and in 2024 they'd identified that if 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 as goes to plan, they by the end of the year they get to uh, tw- uh, 15 million of a runway in terms of revenues, which at the time seemed, you know, seemed, you know, a, a good, you know, a good, a good uh, performing business, you know, alongside Bitcoin that's not correlated. Iris Energy came into the market and they announced they purchased $10 million worth of the uh, NVIDIA 100 chips. And they have aspirations as well of growing a HPC business alongside the fact that, they're, you know, they're growing their mining business significantly with the Childress site there. Um, but they had no customers. In the case of they are, you know, at the moment, they're announcing they're dis- discussing with customers. Roll on to, you know, literally November and, you know, um, Sam and his team came out and announced not only had they purchased some of these uh, some of these chips, they'd also got a customer. And that's the really important part of, of the conversation. You know, um, um, you know, it's all right announcing we're going to go into the space and, you know, you mentioned AI in any conversation at the moment, and people sort of start start thinking that we use it every day as it is anyway, without even realizing we're using AI. And so, you know, for a miner to go out there, not only to show that, you know, they, they, they bought a business, but they've got a customer. And so initially the figures that came out and Sam, Sam you know, we'll, we'll, we'll clarify this. I think it was like 35 million a year revenues for three years. And literally within weeks of that announcement, a further announcement came out at 50 million a year. And that is like, that's that's significant. I mean, you know, Hi, we're looking at 15 million. And so this deal that Sam, you know, can probably talk a bit more about is 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 the sort of like a benchmark now for miners to start looking at and seeing, you know, where they're going to go, because they're going to be they're going to be looked at in comparison to what BitDigital have done. Um, and I think it's I think it's great. I think, you know, in terms of what they mined last year, I mean, I know they're going to grow their hash rate this year. They've got a plan to go to 6x a hash. But, you know, I think it was like less than 50 million in Bitcoin mining last year. And they've got a contract at 50 million a year uncorrelated, um, which will give them some great revenues coming in if the Bitcoin price doesn't go as everyone hopes it goes over the next over the next 12 months. Yeah, you're exactly right, Anthony. And, and what a contract that was, Sam. And I know you just alluded to the potential upsizing of that in the near future as well. So a little bit of a cliffhanger for everyone, but um, Sam, I'm curious now that you were a little bit later to the game, you guys announced this massive contract. Um, First and foremost, how were you able to do that? And what does that really mean now for the business? Well, here's the thing. We were a little later to the game because we wanted to announce an actual business. So before we announced it, we were working quite furiously while all these other guys were announcing their AI aspirations. We just didn't want to announce an aspiration as well. We wanted to secure a business, get the data center, connect all the dots with respect to the procurement and the machines and have the plan to execute. And now that's been done. So we wanted to actually announce something substantial as opposed to just announcing a dream or a vision. So that's why it seemed that perhaps we were a little bit late to the game, but the only reason it seems like we're late to the game is because we're actually furiously working on making it happen and building an actual thing before announcing anything else while everybody was just announcing these visions. Gotcha. And that's a great point to clarify, I guess, regardless of when the PR came out, the work itself started long, long before that. Now, speaking of announcements, we're going to get into the fun part of the interview here. So there's been a little bit of controversy, uh, which is always healthy for an industry. We have some of the uh, peer CEOs, I'll leave you to name names, Sam, um, coining this uh, a flash in the pan uh, to, to say, um, I guess, HPC AI maybe isn't sustainable, maybe isn't that meaningful for some of the companies that we've just talked about. But to me, $50 million is is anything but a flash in the pan. So I wanted to open up that conversation. Uh, maybe we can go over some of the remarks, Sam, and, and then you can kind of give us a little bit of a walkthrough of, of your side of the story there. Sure, happy to go through any particular remarks. And I think you're referring to uh, to Fred uh, Fred's heels, uh, comments. Um, so yeah, look, I don't think 50 million per year over three years is flash in the pan, especially when you're even growing that contract. Uh, we have our, we, we built 
the largest AI, AI data, data center uh, that exists right now in Iceland. And just to let you, just to be clear, we we don't build data centers. We put our money in the machines, and then we contract uh, with the, the correct data center as to where we park those machines. In this respect, in this particular topic, it's to, in relation to the AI machine P one hundreds. But I would say that with respect to um, you know that's basically our business model. We are infrastructure light. We do not build the data center, and that for us is really great in terms of managing your risk. If Bitcoin goes down a certain level, you don't want all this massive overhead paying 300 employees uh, in data centers that you own. So we'd rather put our money simply in the machines and have profit shares with particular operators. In our case, we have about six or seven operating partners across our Bitcoin mining fleet and AI. Sure, and and I've uh, done a little bit of reading on this, Sam, but my understanding is the data center itself for HPC is considerably more expensive, like eight, 10, 12 times. Um, is that yeah. accurate? And is that a, a barrier of entry to maybe people who want the vertical integration, their own data center type of thing? If you want vertical integration, yeah, you're gonna pay a pretty price, but we didn't do vertical integration. We contract, we bought the machines and we contract with an existing data center that was able to manage the AI machines that we bought. So that's very different. We did not invest in infrastructure to build a data center. It was already there. And we contracted with the data center and sharing some certain economics with respect to that. But we made not a penny in terms of investing in a data center with respect to um, to AI. Yeah, and I think that's important to highlight here, you guys, is that is one of the, the I guess, arguments towards HPC. Now, speaking of infrastructure, Anthony um, and, and Fred and the Marathon team, I know we've seen kind of strategy shifts over uh, the last few quarters from some of these players. So do you have any comments there in terms of uh, the asset light versus vertical integration and how HPC plays into that? Um, well, I mean, I had a conversation with Fred face to face in London in 2022 when we discussed, you know, for over, over a, a, quite a bit of time there about the, the structures that Marathon were using, which was different to most of the miners in, in, in respect. And they were looking at this asset light strategy. They didn't want to build infrastructure, spend hundreds of millions building infrastructure. Uh, they want to spend all their capital on minor machines. And, I, and actually, on paper, it sounds the right way to go. However, when you start putting, um, you know, your trust and faith in the host company to make sure that your uptime is where it needs to be, your energy prices are relatively where you where you want them to be, um, that's where the challenge becomes. And control is something that you don't have. I mean, bear in mind, if you go back two years ago, Marathon Digital, be it the largest mining company by market capitalization and now by hash rate, had something like 15 employees. So they didn't have employees in all these sites that they were hosted on. I know that number of employees has gone to close to 50 now. And with the with the recent purchase of the two sites, it will like obviously significantly increase because they'll be their staff now. But having those 15 staff back in 2022, you didn't have the ability to control what your destiny was. And my metrics over the last two and a half, three years have shown that generally marathon's performance when you look at the mining from a bitcoin per x hash perspective hasn't been as good as peer miners um in the likes of bit farms high digital iris energy um clean spark they they've been delivering uh you know significantly more bitcoin from their machines because they've got control of those machines and they've also got control of when the power can be turned on and off, and off as well for curtailment um, and they've got control of sites because also uh, Marathon had some massive orders in 2022 that were delivered without any sites to go into. So effectively, they had a lot of orders that were sat in garages for you know the best part of 12 months. So 2023 saw them get to 23x hash, but you know they have some significant challenges to get to 23x hash because they have no control of of all their destiny all the way through. I'm not saying no control zero, but they have a lack of control. Um, with regards to their change now in strategy, having bought these two sites literally last week, uh, that was the closure of the deal, that now takes their infrastructure to now 40% of the, 45% of their business. So they are realizing, you know, albeit, you know, a little bit late to the party, that, that you know, that, that infrastructure does give them a little bit more control, does give their production a little bit more than, um, um, than they, they require. And, um, you know, it's, 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 
it's it will show positive. I'm sure it will show positive um, metrics once they start delivering on those sites, like other miners have seen. I'm not saying you know hosting is not the way to go, but when you're the size of Marathon Digital with 23, 24, 25 exahash, you want to be able to control some of that there in when you've got like nine or ten different sites. And um, now we'll start seeing that sort of change around. Um, and then obviously with 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 Fred's comments about HPC and saying that you know um, it, this is a, a you know an industry where you know the technology will determine how long Bitcoin miners can actually stay in that in that environment. Um, I think we need to wait a bit more to see what actually happens. And 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 with Sam and and Bit Digital, you can see you know they've got a great contract there. They've got a contract for three years. Um, and it, you know it can be done. You know it can be done out there, and and you know people will be looking at this now and looking at their financials when they come out. Not maybe the first the first quarter for ne the next reporting period, but the one after that will have, you know, the the, the, the next three months of twenty twenty four, and we'll start seeing this revenue streams coming through, and we'll start seeing margins coming through, and that's where we'll look into the data there and compare miners then from what they're actually bringing in gross margins. That's because right. although we haven't heard the margins from Sam. We did have a, there was a podcast where um, Aidan talked specifically about the margins. And he's been very vocal about this, Aidan Killick from iDigital. And he was saying the margins are significantly higher than, than Bitcoin mining. And maybe Absolutely. Sam can put something on, you know, as, as to that in, in this conversation. Yeah, that's direction. That's true. That's directionally true. I mean, it always depends on where the big, the price of Bitcoin is, of course. Uh, when you compare the two, but the margins uh, in the HPC business is much, much higher. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the main reasons we, we've done this again is to get certainty of revenue. And so the one thing that we've done, unlike anybody else in the sector, is we've positioned ourselves to have this fantastic lucrative business and we've become this call option on Bitcoin. In other words, if Bitcoin goes up, we're going to do extremely well. But if it doesn't, after the halving, we'll do very well anyway. So it's a win-win for us. And I don't think there's any other company in the Bitcoin mining sector that could actually make that, that stance. It, it's a really valid point, Sam. And I know as the halving gets closer and we're still seeing the, the retreat in the price of Bitcoin, a lot of the companies and in a retail investment community are, are saying exactly that. What if the bullish thesis doesn't come true? Bitcoin isn't at 100K and, and then right. what happens, right? So right. The, the other thing I wanted to bring up and the reason I kind of said, hey, strategy shift, uh, infrastructure versus uh, self mine is I wanted to illustrate that there this industry is still growing and it's still emerging just like AI and there's a lot of decisions being made and and time will tell which which outcome is the best but Sam I definitely think you guys are on to something as we see in the numbers and Anthony said two important things he said control <clears throat> and uptime and I know uptime specifically in HPC uh, is is extremely important so can you talk to us a little bit about how bit digitals address those two uh, challenges so with respect to uptime, in our case, it depends on what the contract says. I think men, I think Fred mentioned it's got to be 99.99999%. In our contract, that's not the contractual obligation. It's not far off from that. But the data center that we've contracted with naturally has that. We have that ability. These you can't put these you can't put these machines in a Bitcoin mining center where the uptime varies. So we already have that secure. The uptime is going to be quite high. But the uptime is always, when you have a business, is determined by the contractual terms of the business and what you've promised to the client. So that's where it stands with respect to the uptime and what our legal obligation is on that. Um, and I think, what was the other point? I, I, I can't quite remember. The control, sorry. So look, we really like our position currently. We have six different operating partners. We've created a competitive tension amongst our operating partners we stay nimble and we like that position because we're able to be agile and move things around whenever we want to we don't want the concentration risk of having all your miners in one place that's an existential risk we don't want to do that and so we don't like uh that kind of risk there's no it's a very asymmetrical bet if things go wrong it could go really wrong uh, and again, you know, with respect to the having that everybody's talking about, you really don't want to run a business on hope. I, 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 we don't want to run a business where we hope that 
uh, the valuation of our company goes up if the ha- if the happening if if Bitcoin goes up. But we're, we're trying to we're trying to position ourselves where we could not only withstand things going sideways but thrive. And if things go well with respect to the Bitcoin price, we are doubling the size of our Bitcoin mining fleet by the end of this year. So we're going to do very well on the Bitcoin mining side if Bitcoin does well. But if not, we kind of want to be in a position, unlike anybody else in the sector, where we'll do extremely well anyway. Who doesn't like a win-win, hey, Sam? <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, I, last time... <laughs> I should mention, I think there has been a misunderstanding of, of our company with respect to that. I, I feel like if we did not announce our AI business, there'd be no difference in our market cap. I don't think the market has given us credit on this, and that's been frustrating. I hope with time, especially as our financials come out and people can do their diligence on, on, the, the, on the entire business, that people will see that uh, we should be given some credit on building this fantastic business while doubling the size of our Bitcoin mining fleet by the end of the year. Yeah, we're on the same page, Sam. That's exactly what I was gonna say in our last video. I don't know how many comments I had that saying, hey, I, I didn't really understand that Bit Digital had this other business. Uh, I didn't know about the press release. You expressed your frustration, Sam, that it kind of flew under the radar. Even the upsizing, yeah. I know, Anthony, we were on a podcast and I kind of mentioned and you said, oh, I didn't even hear about that. Um, so I definitely think you're on to something there, Sam, and uh, we cater to the retail community, right? So that's exactly what you guys want is, is stories like this that maybe Wall Street, Main Street hasn't picked up on yet. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit more about how to think about that, Sam. You mentioned you're doubling your uh, self-mining fleet um, or your Bitcoin yeah. mining fleet. Uh, you've got the HPC going on. We've got having coming up. How do we kind of organize all this in our head? I mean, it's it's really simple. We have this fifty million dollar contract. By the way, we're developing this business. We're talking to new clients, so that's going to be a good thing. Uh, but with respect to our anchor client, we continue to execute on that, and we will grow that contract exponentially. And so we have this certainty of contract over the next three years, and we're doubling the size of our fleet by the end of the year. And so, if Bitcoin does well, well that's great. But if it doesn't, we're still doing extremely well. And we just don't want to run a business on hope. And, you know, you could be the biggest in the sector, but if Bitcoin doesn't go your way, it's not going to make, it's not going to make any difference. And so that is a problem that I don't think a lot of people in retail understand. For sure. And we've spent some time on the channel talking about the having smaller versus larger companies, balance sheet strength, but there's no question having this kind of client in the bag and, and banked money. I think you said, Sam, I saw the press release. You guys have actually started receiving revenue from the contract this month. Um, so congratulations on that and definitely off to the races. So uh, great conversation, you guys. I know, Sam, every time we talk, it helps add some clarity to the overall business. I'll kick it back to both of you for any closing thoughts or anything maybe we uh, we didn't touch on yet, but um, enlightening as always. I'd like to ask Sam a question if that's all right. And it's, it's around the Bitcoin mining because you also have used the sort of like the hosting, the asset light um, strategy. Is, is there... Is there any way that you would consider looking at infrastructure as you go forward, or you think that model for you at the moment works with your with the level of mine that you have as you go to I six? Think, something that you're considering? We we would consider a hybrid approach. It's possible if there's a data center on the Bitcoin mining side, not on the AI side. That's way too expensive. But Bitcoin mining data center is a much cheaper uh, option. And to that point, Fred is right. You know that building a, a data center for AI is is much more expensive. So. With respect to a Bitcoin mining center, which is a fraction of the price, we would consider it, but it all depends on the price. And we just don't want to do these things to create headlines. We want to do the, we want to, we want to make proper business decisions um, and not create headlines for hype. Makes sense. And any closing thoughts, Sam, or anything we didn't touch on during the discussion? No, we're uh, we're really we're really happy with our operations in Iceland, Canada, and the United States, and uh, we're really happy with our with our two businesses. Uh, we're 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 a Bitcoin again. We're in a way a Bitcoin call option with certainty of revenue. So that's really what sticks us. That's what really differentiates us from the others in the sector. And I hope um, I hope your audience uh, begins to understand that. Sure, and we'll be uh, certain to have you back on throughout the year, Sam, and we can follow that up. 
I'm just thinking call option on Bitcoin and then you start playing some call options on Bit Digital and things get uh, pretty exciting there. But no, in all serious, uh, serious, you guys, this is a great discussion, very meaningful revenue and business unit that you've created. We look forward to seeing the updates and the expansion as that comes throughout the year, Sam. If you guys are still watching, you found some value, hit the like button, it's free to do. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment as you did last time for Sam, myself, Anthony. We'll make sure we get it in our next podcast and we'll see you all soon.